In this video, we're going to look at a specific type of isomerism that's a type of stereoisomerism known as cis-trans isomerism, or sometimes this is called ZE isomerism for the stereochemical descriptors that correspond to cis and trans structures. And the basic principle is of cis-trans isomerism is that certain organic structures have sort of intrinsic sides built into them, right? So if we look, for example, at an alkene, carbon-carbon double bond, the alkene double bond, the CC double bond, sort of has two sides. Let's draw two R groups, R1 and R2. We can think about those groups being on the same side of the double bond. This is what we call cis, or opposite sides of the double bond, and this is what we call trans. And those terms can be used to refer to the molecule itself, the molecule as a whole, or the relationship between the groups. So for example, here we would say R1 and R2 are trans, and the two remaining H's are also trans. A similar idea can be applied to ring systems. And for this, let's imagine looking at a five-membered ring from the side. Looking at, a say, a cyclopentane ring like this from the side reveals that the ring sort of has two sides or faces to it, right? So I'll draw in a couple of hydrogens here to illustrate this idea. We have a space above the ring that we might call the top face, and we have a space below the ring that we might call the bottom face. And where groups show up in relation to the top and bottom faces of the ring, and whether they're on the same face or opposite faces of the ring, is a cis-trans isomerism sort of question. So for example, like we did for the alkene, we could draw two R groups, R1 and R2, on the cyclopentane ring. And for example, in this arrangement, we would see that R2 and R1 are in a trans relationship on opposite faces of the five-membered ring. But if, for example, I exchange the positions of R1 and this H right here, I generate an isomer in which R1 and R2 are on the same face of the cyclopentane ring, and this would be considered a cis isomer. So we'll see more examples on the next slide, but this is the basic idea. Cis-trans isomerism uses the notion that certain organic structures, double bonds and rings, most importantly, have intrinsic sides or faces to them, and we're interested in whether groups show up on the same or opposite sides of those faces. As we just saw, two isomers that differ only in the positions of groups relative to a double bond or ring are called cis and trans isomers, and we can apply those terms to the groups themselves or the isomers as a whole. So on the left, for example, we see examples of cis isomers in which two groups of interest are on the same side of a double bond or ring. So in cis-2-butene, for example, we have two methyl groups that are on the same side of the double bond. If we draw a line through the double bond, dividing the alkene in half, both methyl groups are on the same side of that double bond. We can also apply the term cis to rings. So this cyclohexane, for example, contains kind of a natural plane if we think about the average of the two chair forms, and both methyl groups are above that plane. They're on the same side of the plane, quote-unquote, of the cyclohexane ring. This is a cis isomer. Now, we can convert each cis isomer to a trans isomer by exchanging the positions of the groups at one of those carbons linked to those groups. So, for example, if I exchange this H that I'm highlighting in red with this blue methyl group here, I end up with trans 2-butene. Note that now, if I divide the alkene in half by drawing a line through the double bond, now the methyl groups are on opposite sides of that line. This is characteristic of a trans isomer. Likewise, if I exchange one of the methyls in cis-1,2-dimethylcyclohexane with the hydrogen linked to its carbon, so let's highlight that in red by analogy to the case above, well, then I end up with a trans isomer where the two methyl groups are now on opposite sides of the plane formed by the carbons of the six-membered ring. Note that we have one methyl above that plane and one methyl below that plane. So this is a trans isomer, trans 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane. Now, what is the isomeric relationship 
between cis and trans isomers? Well, let's rule out a couple of things immediately. They cannot possibly be constitutional isomers. Because think about how we interconvert them. All we did was exchange the positions of two groups, an H and a methyl group, linked to a common carbon. So the connectivity of cis and trans isomers is the same. They are not constitutional isomers. But they're clearly not the same thing. And one important reason why they're not the same compound is that rotation about double bonds is not possible. Activation energy is too high under normal circumstances. So a conformational change cannot interconvert cis and trans 2 butene because of restricted rotation around the double bond. The same is true, of course, for ring systems. We can't simply flip the H and the methyl group in dimethylcyclohexane here to generate the trans isomer from the cis or vice versa. We'd have to break and reform bonds in order to do that. And so these are also not conformational isomers. They're stereoisomers of some kind. And to determine whether they're enantiomers or diastereomers, we follow the usual process. Are they mirror images or not? Well, just to illustrate this very briefly, let's think about cis-2-butene. Cis-2-butene, if it walked up to a mirror, the mirror image would still contain a cis relationship between the two methyl groups right, since the two methyl groups are pointed toward the mirror in the original structure and must both be pointed toward the mirror in the mirror image as well. So reflection or generating a mirror image can't change a cis relationship into a trans one or vice versa. As a result, we can conclude that these molecules, the cis and trans isomers, cannot possibly be related as enantiomers. But all the arguing we've already done has told us they must be stereoisomers. From this, we can conclude that they must be diastereomers. So cis and trans 2-butene, for example, are diastereomers of one another, and the cis and trans dimethylcyclohexanes are also diastereomers of one another. And this will always be true of cis and trans uh, isomers. They are always diastereomers of one another, since reflection cannot change a cis relationship into a trans one or vice versa.